I mean, the things they say about the president of the US. So I wrote this song. I turned on my TV, though it was hard to see these men who would be head of state. What a great country, from sea to shining sea, we watched the Republicans debate. Newt stood with his third wife and said, you bet your life, the president is a red. He wants to tax the rich a lot, take your limo and your yacht, he wants to have the banker's heads. And if he gets in again, he'll paint the White House pink, and then he'll hire Chavez as his VP. Then we'll be right on track to give capitalism the sack, along with the insurance industry. If only it were true, if only it were true, I'd be so happy, wouldn't you? If only it were true, if only it were true, if only it were true. He'll give everyone food stamps and wheelchair ramps. He'll subsidize windmills and maple syrup. He'll cripple industries with eco-friendly policies. And pretty soon we will be just like Europe. He'll, he'll shut down oil wells. He'll give out solar cells to every home in Delaware and Illinois. He'll ban logging in the parks. He'll send the works of Karl Marx to the homes of every American girl and boy. He'll be giving out free rides and free lunches in his high-speed trains. He'll start lots of public works full of union perks. He'll fill the cities up with bicycle lanes. If only it were true, if only it were true, I'd be so happy, wouldn't you? If only it were true, if only it were true, if only it were true. Watch out, his critics tell. This shall be our death knell. He'll pull the troops in and end all of our wars. He'll gut military spending. Our empire will be ending and soon will be invaded by the Moors. He'll legalize all drugs, give away beer mugs and hookahs to every child and Korans. He'll ban religion from the schools, send 40 acres and a mule to every person who makes less than 50 grand. He'll close Guantanamo to torture, he'll say no, he'll make us all drive electric cars. He'll reinstate the fairness doctrine, take off that damn flag pin, and he'll put Rupert Murdoch behind bars. If only it were true, if only it were true, I'd be so happy, wouldn't you? If only it were true, if only it were true, if only it were true. If only it were true, if only it were true, I'd be so happy, wouldn't you? If only it were true, if only it were true, if only it were true. Here's a song I wrote to alienate all my friends, but many of them turned out to have a sense of humor, but... I don't drive a car because they run on gas, but if I did, it did run on biomass. I ride a bike, or sometimes a skateboard, so fuck off all you drivers and your yuppie hordes, sitting all day in the traffic queues. I'm a better anarchist than you. I don't eat meat. I just live on moldy chives or the donuts that I found in last week's dumpster dives. Look at you people in that restaurant. I think you are so sad when you could have been eating bagels like the ones that I just had. I think it is a shame all the birds want things you do. I'm a better anarchist than you. I don't wear leather. I like my clothes in black And I made a really cool hammock From a moldy coffee sack I like to hop on freight trains I think that is so cool It's so much funner doing this Than being stuck in school I can't believe you're wearing Those brand new shiny shoes I'm a better anarchist than you I don't have sex And there will be no sequel Because heterosexual relationships Are inherently unequal I'll just keep on moshing to anti-flag and crass until there are no differences in gender, race, or class. All you brainwashed breeders, you just haven't got a clue. I'm a better anarchist than you.
I don't believe in leaders, I think consensus is the key. I don't believe in stupid notions like representative democracy. Whether or not it works, I know it is the case that only direct action can save the human race. So when I see you in your voting booth, then I know it's true. I'm a better anarchist than you. I am not a pacifist, I like throwing bricks And when the cops have caught me, then I'm taking a few licks I always feel lucky if I get a bloody nose Because I feel so militant and everybody knows By the time the riot is all through I'm a better anarchist than you I'm a better anarchist than you ever since his father died on a construction site. He was one of six siblings. This would be his fate. Work in the streets of the city to put food on everybody's plate. He couldn't afford the bribes. The cops would make him pay. So sometimes they'd knock his cart over and get him back that way. Last December they smashed his scales to put him in his place. And for good measure, a cop spat in Mohammed's face. Maybe there was something he could do. Word came from on high, we don't talk to people like you. Mohammed, who was easy, was now living on a wire. He went and bought some paint thinner, set himself on fire. Word spread through the region, and soon you'd hear the same. Proud and desperate people going up in flame. Sometimes windows open. Sometimes the floor it creaks, but no one knew what would happen in only a few weeks when the dictator ran away. When the dictator ran away. People tried to hold the march for the immolated dead. Police met them there with truncheons and bullets to the head. People went up to the capital. They would not be deterred. Sometimes this is just what happens to a dream deferred. The police went on the attack. Thousands wounded, hundreds killed. With blood the streets were covered. With gas the air was filled. But the people held their ground. Tunisia's daughters and their sons. And one day the cops had had enough. They just put down their guns when the dictator ran away. When the dictator ran away. Someone had to deal with this rebellious riffraff, so Ben Ali called a meeting of his chiefs of staff. He said these terrorists have decided to go out on the attack. It's time for you, the army, to take our country back. It's time for you, the army, to go and make a stand. Show these terrorists that we are in command. It's time to gun these criminals down. That's what he said, now go. The general got his orders, and the general said no. When the dictator ran away, He got in a plane, tried to go to France, but he was a hot potato, so he did a little dance. Ended up in Jidda to live there in exile, while his fellow warlords shiver from the Tigris to the Nile. All across Arabia, you can hear them talk and sing, those who dare throw off their shackles, who would shout that freedom ring. Where we'll be by next year is for anyone to say, but many will recall where they were on the day when the dictator ran away. When the dictator ran away.
<laughs> so I, uh, I went to Athens a couple times over the past couple years and discovered that it is not just a rumor, it is in fact true that not only are lots of Greek people militant and left-wing, but the dogs as well. <laughs> and this, you know, this becomes abundantly clear. Yeah, as soon as you get there, you know, you see all the people are hanging out in the parks all night, every night. And, uh, you know, the dogs, too. This is not working. <laughs> Very, very awkward strip teases. <laughs> the, uh, the dogs, you know, you, you, could, you could think that the dogs consistently side with the people against the police because the people feed them, the police beat the people that feed them. I mean, that could be, uh, you know, they might just be base opportunists, you know. But there's also the possibility that they have political convictions and we just don't, you know, have any way of ascertaining exactly how deep their analysis of capitalism actually is, you know? <laughs> but certainly they're victims of it, and there's no doubt about that. <laughs> and, uh, of course, one particular dog, you know, most of the dogs behave like the people do in the sense that when they're being fired at by projectiles, like tear gas canisters, they tend to run, you know, to get about 100 meters away from the police that are firing the tear gas canisters. So then you have the police, and you have the people, and in the middle you have the cloud of tear gas. And, uh, but... There's one dog that never runs, and um, there was another dog that never ran too, but he died. But this dog is named Lukanikos, which means sausage, <clears throat> and I was trying to find Lukanikos, and, you know, so it turns out that there's thousands of stray dogs in Athens, and they've been evolving a, you know, a genetic, uh, you know, a, a very well-integrated gene pool, so they're all medium-sized and orange, and often wearing red bandanas. And so it's really impossible to tell them apart for me. I don't know, but the, all the Greeks, interestingly, all the Greeks I would talk to, every time I'd see a medium-sized orange dog with a red bandana lying on the sidewalk, I'd ask a nearby Greek, is that Lukanikos? And they always knew who I was asking about, and they always knew that that was not him, so <clears throat> I didn't get to meet him, but I wrote a song for him anyway. <laughs> Lots of folks are revolting, they've had enough of this shit. The rich are getting richer, they're saying that's it. But with Luke it's different, that's clear, as he emerges from the fog. Let's hear it for Luke and it calls the riot dog. It's a fight between people, but he is no pawn. He knows exactly which side he's on. In the machine of capital, he is no cog. Let's hear it for Lucanicos, the riot dog. When a smoke bomb comes towards him, he kicks it back at the buzz. He acts a bit different than a normal dog does. He's got a fan page on Facebook, but he's got no time for a blog. Let's hear it for Lucanicos, the riot dog. Let's hear it for Lucanicos, the riot dog. last summer, um, just two weeks after the massacre, and uh, I was reading a bit of Andres Breivik's uh, manifesto about this. Say he acted alone for a Europe white and free, a sick and twisted man from an otherwise sane society, the image of Aryan blonde, almost iridescent, with a manifesto quoting from the Crusades to the present. But he stood on many shoulders. Of this we can be sure, a millennia of xenophobes who slaughtered to be pure since before the first crusade when a mighty Christian band hacked and stabbed and burned their way to the Holy Land. 
They say he acted alone, but in his mind he was another of those who came before him, his mighty Christian brothers who rode covered in armor, served their masters well. They vowed to chastity. They vowed to kill the infidel. They marauded west to east in the name of Christendom. They killed Jews, Muslims, pagans, fellow Christians by the thousand in the name of Jesus. From the Jordan to the Rhine, the Red Cross on their chest plates, their terrifying sign in the shadow of the night's Templar. They say he acted alone, no one said this of the Pope, whose victims were left burning or hanging from a rope. The Lord's own inquisition for six centuries, the ethnic cleansing of a continent, a Christian tyranny. European Jews and European Muslims fled the Christian Caliphate to be protected by the Sultan. For 500 years they prospered beneath the Turkish sky for those left behind. Convert or die in the shadow of the night's Templar. But he's living in a country where the xenophobic right is the second biggest party And he's living on a continent that is overrun with prime ministers who tell us multiculturalism is done They brag of their traditions, they swell with Christian pride For their civilization built on holocaust and genocide Anders Breivik pulled the trigger, but he did not write the play That script was being written a thousand years ago today In the shadow of the night's pen alone and they want us to believe that moderating rhetoric is the best we can achieve but moderating rhetoric will bring us nowhere near to the understanding that the problem is right here European empires European greed European Christians poison European seeds European racists running European states European tolerance for European hate in the shadow of the night's Templar Yeah, well, that, that, yeah, that, that's about Europe generally, you know, starting with the Dutch uh, who played football with the heads of Native Americans in Manhattan Island, and, you know, for example, like, for example yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny how sometimes Europeans have this sense of like, well, we're doing better than you guys in North America. You guys, you guys had a really fucked up system there, which is true, but who do you think runs it, you know? Yeah. We're all descendants of those guys who were playing football with the heads of the Indians, you know? So, I was in Denmark during Fukushima when it started and I was thinking about the uh, reasons why Denmark is one of the few uh, you know, countries of the rich uh, world that never built a nuclear reactor. Here's the story behind it. It was in the 1970s. The fuel crisis had begun. The choices were presented to us as if we had none. Leaders of industry said they could solve the problem by mastering the power of the radioactive atom. Some folks in western Jutland got a notion in their heads. They thought there might be something they could offer up instead. A few hundred people gathered at a little place called Twind and declared their will to harness the power of the wind. We're gonna build the biggest windmill in the world. We're gonna build the biggest windmill in the world. There were many who said their science wasn't sound, that such a mighty windmill would simply topple to the ground. Some of them were scientists, the vast majority were not, but they knew with years of effort you could do a lot. Word about the project spread far and wide. A hundred thousand visitors came to help and to advise. Until one day these windmill builders drove in with a crane and lifted up their giant wings with a mighty chain. 
We're gonna build the biggest windmill in the world. We're gonna build the biggest windmill in the world. When Twindcraft was completed, it reached up to the sky. Its wings churned in the air at 54 meters high. The critics all fell silent. No one now was jeering, as even industry agreed. This was some damn fine engineering. The wind regaled Jutland from the North Atlantic Sea, as it was seamlessly converted into electricity. It was power for the people, leukemia for none, when they declared in Denmark, just south of the midnight sun. We're gonna build the biggest windmill in the world. We're gonna build the biggest windmill in the world. They gave away the patents. They said knowledge should be free. And their plans were copied by a newborn industry. Soon Denmark would be known as a windmill building nation. And it all started with some hippies at the Twindcraft power station. Debates were held in Parliament about which way things should go. Build a nuclear reactor, the majority said no. It could have gone quite differently. In much of the world it did, except for those in Ulfbo who said we're getting off the grid. We're gonna build the biggest windmill in the world. We're gonna build the biggest windmill in the world. We're gonna build the biggest windmill in the world. We're gonna build the biggest windmill in the world. To occupy Amsterdam, folks. I, w I, I landed in uh, New York from Europe last September, just the day before the Wall Street protests, and then spent the next two months uh, doing an Occupy tour, which which was easy to do because I already had a tour planned of North America, and so I just went to the Occupy sites after each gig, which was really great because I didn't have to figure out how to pay for it, you know. And uh, and the media was always. As they're covering the division of wealth more than ever, they're also, at the same time, always saying, these people don't know what they're doing. You know, they, they boiled their whole campaign down to two numbers and they still can't figure it out. So I wrote this song to try to help them. But the media, that Because this is where they buy the politicians. Because this is where power has its seat. Because 99% of us are suffering at the mercy of the madmen on the street. Because all of us are victims of class warfare being waged on us by the 1%. Because these greedy banksters rob the country, leaving us without the means to pay the rent. Because the last time that we had a decent government was about 1932. Because we the people are supposed to run this country But instead it's all run by and for the few Because now we know the rich do not pay taxes But when they need a hand it's us who bail them out Because we suspected we lived in a plutocracy But suddenly of late there is no doubt So we're gonna stay right here parents lost their savings because I have never opened an account because the interest on my credit card just doubled and now I can't pay the minimum amount because these budget cuts are just immoral with our schools as overcrowded as they are because there are no buses where I live but I can't afford to drive a car 
Because so many of us don't have health insurance Because the rest of us have it but it sucks Because the rich are flying in their private jets While the rest of us are slogging through the muck Because capitalism isn't working The system has just failed to produce Because the one percent are prospering While the rest of us just suffer their abuse So we're gonna stay Right here. We're gonna stay right here. Because it has been demonstrated aptly that the winners are the ones who stick around. Because this world should belong to everyone Not just the banksters who would smash it to the ground Because we've noticed voting doesn't change things When the politicians are mostly millionaires Because we're learning how to stand up like Tunisians Like they did in Tahrir Square Where a young man named Mohammed Bouazizi Struck a match that lit up all the earth all around the world the spell was broken And a movement for the future was in birth Because there's only so much shit the rich can feed us Before we figure out which side we're on Because we've learned if we want our liberation It will only come if we stay here till the rising of the dawn So we're gonna stay right here Corporations are not people, and we can't just let them choose. Because if we leave our fate to them, then all of us will surely lose. Because the climate clock is ticking, and we can't just leave our world behind. Because corporate rule isn't working, and it's time for humans' hearts and minds. Because you can't take it with you. Because the rich just do not care Because it doesn't matter how much you make But how much you can share Because these moments don't come often Because we want truly to be free Because we know what really matters Something called society So we're gonna stay right Started at midnight when we had twice a minute. Yeah, that's a squat time. We could play a game. Yeah, right. We're just gonna hold it. They were old when I was young. Now they've all but passed away. Now it's just a second hand memory of the day when from all around the world they sailed off to Spain to fight against the fascists. Where so many men were slain Who will recall the days When they all stood side by side Now that the last Lincoln veteran died Beside Martin Luther King Or in a veteran's parade You could see the men who made the journey To join the 15th Brigade nations of most every creed and hue, Catholics and Protestants, atheists and Jews, join together in the trenches to turn back the fascist tide, now that the last Lincoln veteran died. The working class of many nations join in the desperate bid with what 
weapons they could find. They fought to save Madrid from Brussels and Berlin, Galway and London town. Who will recall the brigadistas who went to take the fascists down? There beside the Spanish people, even the figs and olives cried. Now that the last Lincoln veteran Just sing that chorus, then you just broke the law to be in the 
Uh, or ever made the soup, you know, just it's, it's endless. And it, at least, at least this spot takes an army to run, which is good, because armies are useful. Um, there's there's uh, CDs at the, at the entrance, there's CDs and an email list. If you sign the email list, then every time I write a song, I put it up on YouTube and send it to your inbox. And so it's, it's kind of like journalism, but it rhymes, you know. <laughs> and, and you'll hear about the next time I come to the Netherlands and stuff like that. And, uh, and what else? Yeah, so I've made a commercial announcement. I've fulfilled my contract as U.S. citizen. And, uh, and it's all on the web. All, it's all on the web for free as well. And here's a song thank I wrote. You. Uh, and some of you I met, oh, thank you. And some of you I met uh, at, at the Bonn uh, climate camp uh, in 2000, I believe it was. Or was it 2001? I can't remember. It was, you know, a long time ago. And, uh, and it was really surreal, particularly because we had such a good time. We were on this farm and, you know, protesting, you know, this, these climate talk talks and stuff. But, but it was the same exact same time as the G8 in, in Italy. And we were all hearing about what was happening there while we were having this, you know, peaceful protest with these Bonn police who seemed to be, like, following the rule books on how to be, like, a textbook nice cop, you know, uh, like, it's like, you know, in the books you read about the civil rights movement where they pick people up, you know, four cops, eat one on each limb, and they gingerly carry you off the road, you know, that was the Bond experience as opposed to the Chad book experience, which is quite different. Um, yeah, very different. Um, but I wrote this song after Carlo Giulia was killed. When the world has gone crazy, and it's all becoming clear, when they're gunning down our comrades, and it seems the end is near. As they're loading up the launchers for the tear gas grenades, we can take off our bandanas and kiss behind the barricades. When it's madness all around, and you can see this at a glance, we will sing and we will cry, we will laugh and we will dance. As they shout their marching orders beneath the helicopter blades, we shall seize the moment for a kiss behind the barricades. They will try to break our spirit, and at times they may succeed, but our love for the world is stronger than their greed. When the building is surrounded, and hope begins to fade, in my final hour, a kiss behind the barricades. As the movement grows, there will be hills and bends, but at the center of the struggle are your lovers and your friends. And the more we hold each other up, the less we can be swayed. Here's the love and solidarity, and a kiss behind the barricades. quite a year, 1871, you know, the workers of uh, Paris, you know, Prussia and France were at war again, and um, the workers of Paris uh, took the opportunity to seize control of the city, uh, at which point, of course, the Prussian and the French uh, okay, governments realized they had more in common with each other than they had previously thought, and they, uh, of course, teamed up to go kill 30,000 French workers in Paris, and um, this was a song a poem for the battle lines that became a song later. This is Alistair Hewlett's version, a wonderful songwriter from Scotland who died a couple years ago. Arise, you workers from your slumbers. Arise, you prisoners of want. For reasons and revolt now flunkers. And at last ends the age of Kant. Away with all your superstitions, servile masses, arise, arise. The land has for the old traditions, spurn the dust to win the prize. Us all comrades, come rally, and at last fight let us face. The internationale unites the human race. Us all comrades, come rally, and at last fight let us face. The internationale unites the human race. Only will make war. 
The soldiers still will take strike at you. They'll break ranks of fight no more. And if these cowboys keep trying to sacrifice us to their pride, they still shall hear the bombs flying. We'll shoot the generals on our own side. Also, comrades, come ready. And the last fight let us face. The international unites the human race. Also, comrades, come ready. And the last fight let us face. The Or peer. Our own right hand of chains must shiver, chains of hatred, greed, and fear. Ere the thieves will admit their booty, and give you all a happier lot. Each at the board must do their duty, and strike when the iron is hot. Also, comrades, come happy, and a last fight let us face. The internationality unites the human race. Also, comrades, come happy, and a last fight let us face. I think we're going to release uh, David from his duty. No, 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 no way! And you became our hero tonight, really. Woo! Thank you very much for playing here. Really cool, really, really cool. I just want to make one call out. First of May, uh, demonstration, uh, 7 o'clock will be out to play. First of May, fuck Wednesday, let's go demonstrate and have fun on the 1st of May. And uh, in front of it, there is uh, more stuff of David Robin. Just take a look and uh, yeah, as soon as you get some more. And uh, yeah, give her one more. You want to play another song? Would you please play another song? Yes! Thank you. Please put the number. Shut them down. Oh gosh, I haven't done that forever. Shut them down. Shut them down! Let's see. You know, mountaintop removal is a form of mining that where they just destroy the entire mountain in order to get at a little seam of coal. And they've been doing it for a long time and uh, in, in place in, in Appalachia. And um, there was uh, some, a friend of mine who was involved with trying to stop this practice um, sent me an article from 1968. And um, true story, it happened... Uh, it happened a couple times, in, in, in once in Tennessee and once in, in Kentucky. I grew up on this mountain, came back here to dwell. Right. 
remember Commandante Francis Hughes. They beat him and they tortured him and they gave him 80 years. When they brought him to the H box, he was greeted there with cheers. He went right onto the blanket, and when the hunger strike began, he was the first to volunteer, along with Bobby Sands. He was an Irish soldier, that's how he did his time. He knew he was no criminal, occupation was the crime. Bobby Sands had passed beyond us, where Francis soon would be. And although he couldn't stand, and he could barely see. Up the rose, that's what he said. 